Hi everyone. Hi mom. Okay, uh, sorry for the shadows. It is a very gloomy day here in uh, Surrey. And um, yeah, I'm going to do my best here. Sorry, I'm twisted up here with my heat guns. Um, I had uh, a few comments on uh, doing another tutorial on uh, tags. And you know, I haven't done that in a really long time. So, like before, I thought I would just play with you guys. I am going to use a few different things that um, are new to me, like the oxide inks. And um, we're going to do some stamping and some texturizing and that kind of deal. So, uh, the first question I always get is, what size are my tags? Now, this one is one I cut out. So, it's three... And about three and an eighth by six and a quarter. Now, I believe this is the same size as uh, the tags you can buy from Rangers, but this is what I used to cut them out. So, yeah, they're they're the same size. The alterations. Uh, hold that up for a second. There's the number. If that helps, right up here. That's what it looks like. It comes with these. I think one of these is extra. I, I have several of these and I like to put them on there. It keeps your paper nice and flat. So when you go to cut it out, you don't get that dip and then you don't get a nice cut. Anyway, that's what I use to cut out my tags. Now I've already tea stained this. This is just um, from a file folder. So you get a nice weight on that and I had laid that on a um, tray that has holes in it and I'm I'm I got it in the kitchen section I think at Walmart and it's meant for like if you do fish sticks or pizzas or whatever it's to crisp the bottom up so you don't have to flip things over that that's what the pan is so anyway that's what I have I hope I'm not too close I might widen out just a bit there we go okay so I'm using a blending tool I bought some oxides. I don't have a lot. This is the vintage photo. And I glued a piece of, um, you know, that stuff. <laughs> my brain just stopped working at the moment. Anyway, just to hold my, uh, my little pad here so I don't lose them. Now, with oxides, you get sort of a chalky look to them. And they're water reactive, so they look really cool once you've sprayed them. So I thought it'd be kind of neat because I like using a lot of wet mediums. And again, as before in a previous video, I don't have a thought process. I just do. So I don't generally sit down and go, okay, this is what I want. Usually what I do is these are the products I want to use. How I use them, you know just whatever comes out. So you just go in a circular motion to get nice coverage. And then I'm going to switch that out. Velcro. There you go. I knew it would come to me. And this one is peeled paint. Peeled paint. I love greens and I wanted to do a tag to go with um, this journal I've been working on it seems like forever and these I'm using quite a few um, pastel-y colors so I thought I would just mix it up here okay go on there It's also a great way to not to lose your pad, which <laughs> I'm very good at doing. This one is Broken China. I love this color. Really pretty color. So I'm going to switch that around since I am right-handed. I love that it it's really, really water-reactive, but... I don't actually think I'm going to use water. I think I'm going to use a Lindy's spray. I'll put a little up here. Okay. Uh, 
All right, that's that. I don't know why that lid's not fitting right. There we go. Okay, I also have these um, pretty stamps that I want to use because uh, the book I'm working on is flora, fauna, and feathers. So there's butterflies and birds and music notes and stuff. And I wanted to give you the number for that. For a change, I kept the packaging. Now, this is from AliExpress, and it's 130078. I will link that in the description box, <clears throat> excuse me, below the video, so long as I don't throw that out. <laughs> uh, okay, so I also want to use some paint, but I think I'm going to spray first. So this is Lindy's Starburst. Lindy's Stamp Gang is what the website is. I will also link that. It's called A Bit of Bubbles. Okay. That's a gold look to it. I better get some paper towel. Uh, sorry, I have such a mess on my desk you wouldn't even believe it. Okay. Just so I don't overspray on anything. do is hear things crashing and falling. <laughs> okay. Give it a good shake. Now, depending on what you want to do, I like blobs, so I, I only push down a little on the head because I do like the blobs. And I want the reaction. Okay, I am going to get my water too, I think. And I'm going to why am I shaking my water? <laughs> okay, great day in Surrey. There we go. Now get it nice and wet, and that will alter your oxide ink. And I'm just going to go ahead and give that a dry. So you see I get a nice pastel, which is what I'm looking for. I get that beautiful, uh, I'll show, I'll hold it up nice and close so you can see that reaction that you get with the water. Now if you're using the Lindy's or any kind of spray that has a glitter in it, you don't want to dab it or it will take the glitter off again. Unless, of course, you don't like the glitter. In which case, go ahead and dab. And I'm going to just flip it over and dry it on this side a little. Huh, I just realized it says made in Canada. Huh, so am I. <laughs> okay. Now. I hold that up nice and close maybe you can see you see how it has little speckles all through it that's the water that did that and it's got blobs of a little bit of sparkle which mm, I'm not like 100% thrilled with so we're gonna do something else I have <clears throat> the stamp pad let me just move some of this so it actually works from Tonic Studios. I love this thing, I'm telling you. Best tool I've purchased yet. Now, what you do is you open it up. Like I said, if I can get it open on my desk. And you have two really strong magnets. You don't want to put them close together because they'll go whoosh, and they're really hard to get apart. Okay, then you position your tag wherever you want. Hold it down with your magnets. Then decide where you want your pad. Now, I think I want to do some music notes. So you put it face down, wherever you want it. Let's see. I think I want to put it up here. Now, you want to make sure that if you're using the acrylic, then it should say clear on the top, on the top here. It should say clear in the corner. If you're using the red, you know, the rubber kind, you pull this out. 
it, it just straight up like that pull it out flip it over and you can see at the top right here it says rubber and on this side it says clear so whichever stamp you're working with that's what you want facing up okay and you just set it right back down again then you go like that get your stamp on there and I'm going to use archival ink to ink up my stamp just like that and then you close it again and it's going to go exactly where you wanted it to give it a push and if it doesn't work like that it hasn't moved so you just do it again now I have the right one up right yeah I do but I might not have put enough ink on it no I probably didn't so then don't move anything, just go back. Oh yeah, I can see where I totally missed the ink. Let's try that again. This is the first time using this stamp, so I'm hoping it's a good stamp. No, it isn't really a good stamp at all. It's not hitting that at all. Hmm, let me adjust this. I don't think it's hitting it at all. Maybe I got a crappy stamp. Well, that sucks. Hmm. What to do, what to do. Should I just leave it or? Hmm. I don't like that. I know what I'll do. Ha ha. That's what I'll do. I will put a bird over it. Let's try that. And if this doesn't work, then I know that it's um, not the stamp. Well, that it's the stamp, I should say. Okay, let's close that. Grab my stamp. Okay. Ink that up. See what happens. Sorry if this is upside down to you too. Oh yeah, see it was the stamp. Ha ha. Not the stamp pad. Okay, so I got that and then I want, I want to move that and I'm just going to wipe that off. Okay, and then I want I do want the music notes. It's really annoying. Well, let's try it again down here. See what happens. See, you can see that it didn't cover there at all. But well, I'll try here. See what happens. You should wipe that off. If you're using archival, um, if you don't wipe it off right away, you will get a little staining. It does come off though. I just waited a little too long. Okay. Now I'm going to move that. Whoops. Still ink on this. the stamp and then we're going to ink it up and I'm only going to ink part of the stamp I think let me see where to put it yeah on an angle I think okay let's try that I'm probably the world's worst stamper oh that's all right So now you can, I don't know, if, hang on, 
let me see if you can see that or not see I got ink here but because of the ridge along here you don't get it on your project which is one of the reasons I love this thing because there's nothing worse than uh, you know getting ridge ridge stamping because you didn't check your stamp before you pushed <laughs> I do that a lot Okay, now, do I want anything else on there? I don't think at this point I do. Oh, oh good thing my finger was in between that. And I'm just going to get this out of the way. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And if you're still awake, <laughs> I want to do something a little more bold on there. So I've got this um, paint by Prima. And this one's called Dragon's Eye, and it's the Sparks series. So it gives a lot of shimmer. So what I usually do is kind of give it a, you know, to get the lid wet, and then I work from the lid. Now, here it is. I have a little bit of sea sponge, which is what I use for all of these things. And I just kind of want blobbies, you know? Excellente. And then I just blob it off. I leave it on there because that's all I use it for. It's just that kind of thing. And then I want boldness around the edge. So I think I'm going to use black. Now, what did I do with my... Uh, on the black. And again, it's the archival because it doesn't move. It's waterproof. And I'm sticking my finger in the wet paint. I am so entertaining, aren't I? You see, this is what art is for me. A big mess. But I have a lot of fun doing it. The Prima paint actually does dry super fast, but you have to remember, um, you know, depending on what you've got down there, it might take a little longer than normal to dry. So I'm going to give it a little help. And I honestly don't worry about all the creasing and stuff because when it's all like super dry, I just work at it to get it to um, flatten out. And it, it will. Okay, I've decided I want pink in there. I have picked raspberry, which is very bright. But with the oxides, I'm not sure because like I said, it's new to me. And I want to add some in here. Okay. And then I'm going to take my water again. I'm just going to spray those spots. See how it fades right out? It's It gives more of a chalky look. So then if you're wanting something a little bit, you know, bolder, then you can go back in with your Distress Inks and you'll get a completely different look. Now I happen to have those right here. So let's try adding now I'll show you the difference. So I used the broken china, remember, with the, that's this one here. And now I have the broken china in the distress. So let's try that. See the difference. 
So we're going to go a little bit in here. here. Oh, I don't know why I still have the paper towel here. Let's get that out of the way. Now that's better. So there is a huge difference in color. I hope that shows my lighting is really bad. Okay, so here's the oxide. It's nice and powdery, and this is definitely deeper. But again, you know, you can go in with um, your water again, which I will. I just want to add a little bit more here because I'm kind of about the color. You guys know this. Okay. And where did it go? Here it is. Let's see what it does. When I give it a squirt. Mm, that's really quite pretty. Now we'll give it a quick dry. And I just saw in my drawer that <laughs> I have a different color of oxide twisted citron now doesn't that look bold let's try it look at that <laughs> i love color it's not going to be this bright obviously but let's add some green because in my opinion things just look better with green So as you can see, you can layer and layer and layer and just keep getting a different look each and every time. Okay, let's squirt that. Let's give it a squat. Oh, that's so pretty. Now the green kind of disappeared, so let's leave it wet and add that while it's still a little wet. Oh, that's really, really lovely. Now, of course, you know, if you watch Tim Holtz at all, this is what he does. That. And that. some of this. Ah, okay, yep, I'm inked. That, and we'll add the blue. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I'm having difficulty with these lids. They're on there pretty tight. And where did I do that? Get that up. Here it is. Let's do that. Ooh, isn't that nice? So bold. Okay, let's move this and this. And that I'm leaving and grab another tag, give that a squish, and then we're going to drop it on there. And I'm going to turn it and just pick up the color. Let's swipe it. That looks actually pretty awesome. I'm gonna give it another squirt though. Oh, that looks so cool. Okay. So if you just wanna do simple, simple, simple tags, that's all you need to do, just that. It gives you a, an artsy background and then you can, you know, layer die cuts on it. And there you go. As they say, Bob's your uncle. Okay. So you dry in between because you don't want to muddy it. Okay. Um, but I'm going to squirt this again because there's not enough water on there. And then I'm going to go this way and drag it through the pink. 
That's it. As Tim says, one and done. Yeah, I never pay attention. <laughs> I should, though. He knows what he's doing. Let's just get a little bit of that brown in there. And then I can go back in with Distress. Where's my... Hang on. Here it is. Now this is the Vintage Photo, and it's the Distress. So I'm going to get that nice, bold, sorry if I'm wiggling the camera, edge. In a circular motion with your tool tipped not flat, tipped. Just run it on its edge. And that way when you start and you want to go in farther, you can. You just keep going in a circular motion. That's why craft mats are super important because it allows you to do that. Okay. See? Simple tag. Nothing special, but yeah, it looks cool, right? And then you can go back with your Lindy spray if you like and add some blobs of color or if you want to grunge it up more, you know, if it's too cutesy for you. You can take something like, um, uh, let me find it, hang on. Uh, this Starburst, this one's beautiful. It's Dark Chocolate Truffle, also Lindy Stamp Gang. Now, instead of squirting, you can blob it. So, you just flick it with your finger. Just like that. Get these awesome dark splotches on there. And when they dry, they'll be sparkly. Now you can go back over this and add a stencil. Do I have one? I have a doily. Now this is just a plain old doily um, from Michaels and all I did was covered it in embossing powder and uh, both sides to make it slippery so that if I wanted to use it as a stencil I can. And then I'll just go back with some vintage photo and just do a little circular motion and I like to go slightly off to give it a shadow so if you go just off of the doily you get a little bit of a shadow like that and you get sort of a doily background but you can use it do it with anything and if you want you can layer them so then go back this way and then you'll get a double pattern like that so then you've got two doilies one on top of the other and that's it and then you can add a die cut to it or Whatever, I just got this new die. It's so cute. And it's, uh, you know, you can add something like that. Stamp some music notes on there, and there you go. You got a cool tag. Okay, so that's it. I've talked enough, and uh, you're probably bored out of your mind. So we'll talk later. Bye.